Hi readers, Lee here. Welcome back to my channel. And it is time for my week in books, which up until an hour ago was a really light week. However, I got bored and I went to the Barnes & Noble. Anywho, we'll start with one that I won't be showing. That's Murder Road, which is back there on my shelf. That was a pre-order that I got this past week. And... That's all I'm going to say about that. I did a video on my reaction to the book. I was really, really pissed off about something, and you can go listen to that. Um, next up, these would have been my final books had I not made a trip um, to the B&N. I got Forgotten Sisters by Cynthia Paleo. Um, this is part of my Nightworms package. Did, I can't remember if I mentioned that. Let's talk about this book. I have not read any Cynthia Palio, Palio, Palio before, so I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully it's a good one. Sisters Annie and Jenna, Jenny, Anna and Jenny <laughs> live in a historic bungalow on the Chicago River. They're tethered to a disquieting past, and with nowhere, nowhere else to go, nothing can part them from their family home. Not the maddening creaks and disembodied voices that rattle the old walls not the inexplicable drownings in the area, or the increasing number of bodies that float by Anna's window. To stave off loneliness, Anna has a podcast, you know I love a podcast in a book, spinning ghostly tales of Chicago's tragic history. But when Anna captures the attention of an ardent male listener, she awakens to the possibility of the world, possibilities of the world outside. As their gr relationship grows, so do Jenny's fears. Never, more and more people are going missing in the river, and then two detectives come calling. They're looking between a link. They're looking for a link between the mysteries of the river and what's housed on the bank. Even Anna and Jenny don't understand how dreadful it is, and still can be, when the truth about their unsettled lives begin to surface. Hmm. That looks really good. The next book that was part of my Nightworms package was The Haunting of Velkwood by Gwendolyn Kiss. Kiss? Kiss? I'm not sure. Um, I actually had this on my wish list before I realized it was going to be part of the Nightworms package. This is a suburban ghost story about a small town that trapped three young women who must confront the past if they're going to have a future. The Vel Velkwood vicinity is the topic of occult theorists tabloid one-hour documentaries, and even some pseudo-scientific investigations. As the block of homes disappeared behind a near-impenetrable veil that only the three survivors could enter, and only one has in the past 20 years until now, Tabitha Velquid has avoided anything to do with the tragedy that took her mother and eight-year-old sister, drifting since then from one job to another, never settling anywhere or with anyone. You like that sun thing I've got going on here? It's windy and the wind is making the trees move. <laughs> Anywho, a new researcher tracks um, Talitha down and offers her to, offers to pay her to go back to in, to enter the vicinity. Talitha claims she's just doing it for money, but will she finally get answers or is this just another dead end? Another one that looks pretty good. Can't wait to read it. So, now for my Barnes & Noble trip. And really, I got some things that I knew would be good comfort reads that would not piss me off like Murder Road did. I need some things that make me satisfied as a reader and do not make me angry. So the first got, one I got is a book called Private Scandals by Nora Roberts. This is an older book. It's not new, but I'm trying to collect all her books. Copyright 1993. So I expect this to be a little bit dated, but Nora, Nora always does her research and delivers a satisfying story. And this, um, Dina Reynolds had it all planned. She'd start out in the newsroom of a small Chicago station, then move up to host her own talk show. When her mentor, Angela Perkins, leaves for New York, Dina risks everything for the chance to replace Angela on air. 
Finn Riley, this is the love interest, the network's sexiest journalist, admires Dina's daring ambition, but the pair is soon caught up in the bitter backlash of Angela's revenge. Now, they must uncover the hidden betrayals of Dina's mentor-turned-rival by taking the biggest risk of all. And what made me pick this up is in the prologue, which is Chicago 1994, I, the last sentence is, it was then Dina began to scream. So I'm all about that. Anywho, this is bothering me. I This will be a read soon, for sure, because I've got to get over Murder Road. Next up, uh, True Colors by Kristen Hanna. She also does her research on history, and I... I've seen some complaints saying she got this or that wrong, but they are minor things. They are minor things. They are not murder road bad. I'm still living about that. Anywho, Kristen Hanna, True Colors. The Gray Sisters have always banded together against the distant chill of their father, Winona, the oldest, never felt at home on the seaside horse ranch that has been in her family for three generations. A small-town attorney, she sees herself as an overweight bookworm who doesn't have the qualities her father values, but she is determined to prove her worth to him. Aurora, the middle sister, is the family peacemaker. She brokers every dispute and tries to keep them all happy, even as she, as she hides her own secret pain. Vivian is the undisputed star of the family, a stunningly beautiful dreamer with a heart as big as the Pacific Ocean in front of her house. Oh, with a heart as big as the Pacific Ocean in front of her house. She is adored by all who know her. Everything comes easy for Vivianne, and love most of all. A terrible, shocking crime will shatter their family and tear their beloved town apart. Accused is Vivianne's new husband, an outsider. For the first time, the sisters will be pitted against each other. Loyalties will be tested and secrets revealed. With heart breathtaking pace and penetrating emotional insight, True Colors is an unforgettable novel that explores the dark side of the criminal justice system, the pride of prejudice, the long road to redemption, and ultimately what it means to be a family. This was published in... 2009. It's multiple timelines. Starts from 1979, then goes to 1992. This is also going up into the read real soon pile. In fact, I might read that next. And I got another Kristen Hanna. This will will probably wait a while, um, just because it seems like it's going to be a little bit deeper and not as light as I need. Although I'm not sure how I can think. Murder's light, but whatever. It is called Winter Garden. This is very intriguing. Um, it is one woman's sweeping, heartbreaking story of love, loss, and redemption. Aren't they all? Um, at once an epic love story set in World War II Russia and an intimate portrait of contemporary mothers and daughters poised at the crossroad of their lives. It explores the heartbreak of war, the cost of survival, and the ultimate triumph of the human spirit. Okay, 1941, Leningrad, a once, Leningrad, whatever, a once magical city besieged by war, cut off from aid, buried in snow. A city full of women desperate to save their children and themselves. 2000. You know I love multiple timelines. Loss and old age have taken a terrible toll, toll on Anya Whitson. At last, she will reach out to her estranged daughters. In a halting, uncertain voice, she begins to weave a fable about a beautiful Russian girl who lived in Leningrad a lifetime ago. Nina and Mer Meredith sit spellbound at their mother's bedside, listening to a story that spans more than 60 years and moves from the terrors of war-torn Leningrad under siege to a modern-day Alaska. In a quest to uncover the truth behind the story, Nina and Meredith discover a secret so shocking, so impossible to believe, it shakes the foundation of their family and changes who they believe they are. 
I can't wait to read that. It sounds like it's going to be so good. Okay, so, also, you might not be able to see it. It is, I think, right there. Last week, I read um, A Fate in Inked in Blood, which is kind of a romanticy about, and it's based on North, Norse mythology. Romanticy is a big trend, um, and I like really something between, like, high fantasy and romanticy. I want something kind of in the middle. Um, and this book think, seems like it might be. It is called A Flame in the North by Lilith, Lilith St. Crow. And it's a North Norse-inspired epic fantasy of ancient myth and magical destiny. You know, I talk about, kind of talk a little shit about romanticy, but it was actually Iron Flame or Fourth Wing that got me back, fired up for fantasy again, so I can take a little romanticy if I can find something fantasy to enjoy. So, in this one, because I guess I'm going to read Norse-inspired fantasy this year, the Black Land is a myth. Centuries have passed since the great enemy was slain. Oof. Kind of, it was blinding me. It was a book blinding me. Uh, the Black Land is a myth. Centuries have passed since that great enemy was slain. Yet old fears linger, and on the longest night of the year, people in the south still light ritual bonfires to banish the dark. In her village, this duty falls to Solveig, a girl favored by the gods with powerful fire magic. But when her brother kills a northern lord's son during the ritual, it is Sol who faces punishment by being... Weregild, part hostage, part guest, in the north for a year and a day. As she journeys to her captivity, Saul starts to realize that the Black Land is no myth. The forests teem with foul beasts. Her travel companions are not what they seem, and their plans for her magic are shrouded in secrecy. With only her loyal shield maiden and her own wits to rely upon, Saul must learn to master her powers and wrest control of her fate, for the Black Land's army stirs, ready to cover the world in darkness, unless Saul can find the courage to stop it. I love a fantasy book with a map. And this was published in... Twenty twenty four, February. Interesting. Ooh, now I'm kind of wondering if she's gonna have a follow up to that. That's a read soon, also. Finally, this is not a new author or a new book, kind of like the Nora Roberts. But again, looking for Santa's fantasy. This one seems a little bit more high fantasy, um, but. And it's like seven seven books in the series so far. It is... Anyway, I'll give it a try. The Demon Awakens by R.A. Salvatore. And I thought I had had some of his books or read some. And I may have in my life, but I don't have any anymore that I could find in my app. Um, so, on this. A great beast... A beast? Beast? Awakens all that is violent in the land of Corona. Incited by this newly risen ev evil, goblins and giants ravage the frontier, and their merciless attack leaves behind two shattered orp orf orphans. Slow down, Lee. Stripped of all they hold dear, Jill Saponi? I don't know how to pronounce that. And her friend, Elbrian, Elbrian teeter unaware between de despair and destiny. And I'm going to tell you right here, I, because it's a female protagonist, that's why I picked this book up. Um, I'm interested to see how he writes her, and if this is really good, I'll go on and get the next one in the series. Meanwhile, gemstones have fallen onto the black, black sand shores of a distant la island. When harvested by the monks who guard the secrets of magic, these stones contain incredible powers, including the key to all that is good in the world... 
and all that is evil. So, I'm really happy with this book um, haul that I got this past week and mostly today. Um, Murder Road aside, March has really been a, a good reading month, month for me. I enjoyed everything and I even I've read so far even enjoyed that except for one thing which ruined the book entirely for me so I can't wait to get started on these books and I'll let you know what I think about them uh, think of them that's all for me happy reading